Welcome, you're watching Kaleidoscope Selinko Life News Capsule. Welcome to Selinko Life News Capsule. We've been hearing some not so great stories coming out of the health sector and at the same time hearing about the mass migration of doctors to greener pastures. Last year about 700 doctors including several medical consultants migrated. Currently Sri Lanka has only about 20,000 serving doctors and 2,800 consultants for the entire country. Needless to say patients suffer. On the Petiagoda pages today is scientist, conservationist and public policy advocate Rohan Petiagoda who has some interesting insights. Uh, we've been hearing some horror stories, some not so uh, great stories about our health system which for a long time has been exceptionally good, doing very well when you look at South Asia. What's the reason for this sort of uh, coming down in, in, in the tracks? I think the problem is we've been seeing a shortage of drugs because the government has no money to buy the drugs. And we've seen a drain of doctors. A lot of senior doctors have up sticks and moved overseas because they're worried about the future of the country. And I think from both these aspects, the health system is under pressure. Sri Lanka spends on each of us per capita, a thousand rupees a month on health. Now, what can you buy for a thousand rupees in terms of medicines, for example? Even if you look at inpatients, if you put all the money in the health budget to caring for the 75,000 inpatients at any one time, that's as many hospital beds as we have, so it's roughly the number of inpatients. That translates into about 10,000 rupees per day per inpatient. That includes the accommodation, the food, the nursing, the medical care, the medicines, surgeries, x-rays, laboratory tests. You can't do it. If you go into a private hospital for the same service, you pay 10 times as much. So the government's providing a very cheap service and we, we have to accept that its quality is going to be faulty. Uh, most of these doctors work uh, or have studied in the free education system. Now how do we keep them back? The obvious thing is people want them bonded. I don't think bonding is going to work. It didn't work the last time it was tried a generation ago. Uh, we have two things that have changed since the bonding era. One is that the majority of doctors now are women. Women are not very likely to upstick and move as, as are men. So at least the women consultants and doctors are more likely to remain. I think this is a temporary thing you're seeing in senior male doctors who are, who are pushing off. Our expenditure on higher education is about 60 billion rupees a year. In return for that 60 billion rupees, we have 30,000 bachelor's degrees awarded every year, about 10,000 postgraduate degrees. So if you take that as a whole, for those 40,000 annual degrees that we award, our expenditure per student is about one and a half million rupees. So to put somebody through university, one and a half million being 5,000 US dollars, 4,500 US dollars. This is less than a term's fees if you go overseas for the whole degree course. So we give really good value for money and Sri Lankan degrees are as good as any in the world. They're really good. How do we incentivize, incentivize people to remain in the country rather than fleeing? I think we just got to make it worth their while. They, they want jobs that pay well and uh, earn respect. I think in many cases they get those. And I think we just have to establish a market to, to retain people rather than forcing them to stay through legal instruments and bonds and things. I think that's crazy. Happy Conservation Week. We'll see you next week. We will take care of the risks. Silly good life.